Well, the title of the talk is Movement and Gait Disorders, but we focus a lot on gait because that's what uh, MS patients really, really want to be able to do is, you know, when they come to you, they just want to stay walking. We talk about how in physical therapy uh, we should be examining the patient's functional limitations and then really having a very comprehensive evaluation to look at why they're having those movement uh, uh, disorders. So looking at is it their spasticity or is it their weakness or um, more complex is their balance problems. So balance problems can come from weakness and spasticity, but it also can come from ocular motor dysfunction. It can come from vestibular ocular disorders, um, and then also sensory disorders. If they can't feel their feet, they're gonna be uh, imbalanced. We really stress that as physical therapy, when you have somebody that has uh, a, a gait disorder, you really just can't give them a, uh, you know, a packaged exercise routine. It really should be why are you having that movement or gait disorder and then treating them appropriately depending on your, your evaluation. So that's really what I push with that talk uh, to the nurses. You know, with the, the new medications and how well they're managed now, we're seeing less of that. But we have this huge population of aging MS uh, pe people with MS uh, that uh, you know they may even have canes for other reasons and that's again why we look at the whole person instead of just saying well it's MS related we had a lady um, she was in her 60s when she was diagnosed she didn't use a cane until about three or four years later but it was because she needed a total knee replacement so if you're missing that and you're saying well it's the MS um, then you're doing a dis uh, disservice to that patient um, but in general, I probably see 50% with, with assistive devices and 50% that, that are able to walk without anything. It doesn't affect the actual treatment plan other than um, I just want to make the patients as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. So if I think that they have the potential from going to a cane to nothing, um, I might write that in their goals. Uh, but if they're not safe without a cane, I'm not going to push that. I'm going to just push, let's make your walking as efficient as possible. Sometimes I even ask them to go up to a walker. Um, you know, that's, that's more of a, a, a personal choice for the patient. But if I see that, you know, walking with a cane is very strenuous for them and they're therefore not able to do their activities that they would like to do, I might say, you know, a walker would keep you more active during the day because you're using less energy to walk uh, with that. And then obviously you're safer and that's the big thing. No, um, sometimes we get, you know, people that are coming right off of an acute relapse that may have gone from a cane to a walker and then we can get them back to a cane because usually after that uh, relapse calms down, they get their steroid treatments, they can then, um, you know, start uh, improving. Um, but in general, they're going to stay where they're at for quite a long time before we start to move into a, a more, assist, a more um, uh, more assistive, assistive advice, I guess you would say. <laughs> you know, in PT in general, um, there's a lot into robotics right now, but those are so expensive that you can't, a normal person that just has a medium income is not going to be able to afford some of these robotics that are coming out. Um, I think which, what is more plausible is that they will find a way to manage the disease even better so that patients that are newly diagnosed will never get to the point where they have to have a cane or a walker. Um, you know, and then, they're, you know, then they're, you're left with these patients that already have the disease and their disease process has, has gone to the point where they are in a wheelchair and a walker. and um, uh, it may benefit from some kind of continued technology or new assistive devices to help them, you know, at least get up and walk during the day um, or get some different types of exercise. We have a body weight support treadmill where they're in a harness and they can walk on a treadmill, um, you know, just to get exercise to try to prevent future limitations really for those patients.